Welcome to the lesson 24 of industrial instrumentation. In this lesson, we will consider piezoelectric sensors. Now, as you know, piezoelectric sensors is based on piezoelectric crystals, right. So, the it has a property that if you apply a force across the surface of this piezoelectric crystals, I will get a voltage and this process is reversible. That means, if I apply the voltage, I will get the force also. So, utilizing these principles, obviously, I can make the sensors which can measure force and piezoelectric crystals is extensively used for uh, as I told you that is reversible. That means, it is extensively used for uh, generations of the ultrasonic waves. As you know, there are ultrasonic sensors are are is used, ultrasonic sensors are used extensively in the case of flow measurements and all these things like ultrasonic flow meters are there. So, the, you have seen that uh, actually there we are using the uh, to launch the um, ultrasonic signals, I we want that ultrasonic, I mean piezoelectric uh, sensor, piezoelectric crystals actually we have used there. So, it is another use and also the piezoelectric crystals as you know it is used for measurements of a uh, for the generations of the very uh, stabilized uh, uh, frequency because it is uh, it a piezoelectric crystal if you will see later on that it has a uh, if you draw the equivalent circuit that you will find that it has a very high selectivity. It helps to make the uh, make the oscillator which is very stable in frequency. These are the all different applications of the piezoelectric sensors. So, we will discuss one by one what are the and, and piezoelectric crystals we will find that the I need a separate a special type of amplifier to those uh, to amplify the charge generated across the plates of the piezoelectric crystals. Okay. So, let us look at the piezoelectric sensors and principle of operations. So, contents is not there, contents as I told you we will have we will discuss basically the piezoelectric, uh, um, piezoelectric sensors, its principle and charge amplifier uh, and the um, crystals, piezoelectric crystals that is as it is used in the making, making the sun order oscillator, right. So, principle of operations of piezoelectric crystals, let us look at. The piezoelectric sensors are based on the principles of electromechanical energy conversion. The mechanical input uh, is converted to the electrical output and that is the basis of these transducers and this transducer shows piezoelectric effect. Okay. Actually, this is actually piezoelectric effect that means, if I apply some force, I will get some voltages. This particular effect is called the piezoelectric effect. Not all the material has some uh, this effect. We will see that there are some synthetic materials which has this property. Also, there are uh, there's, there are some natural materials which has this property. Piezoelectric effect, what is this piezoelectric effect? When certain solid materials are deformed, they generate within them an electric charge. This effect is reversible and thus if a charge is applied, the material will mechanically deform in response. These are known as a piezoelectric effect exactly this thing we did uh, while we are making the ultrasonic sensors. Instead of steady voltages what we are giving, we are giving a uh, time varying uh, voltages across one plate obviously, the force which you will get that is also time varying signals and that can be of I mean that can be an order of megahertz range right. So, that we can get the ultrasonic signals from these piezoelectric I mean sensors. Applications, measurement of acceleration, force, also, it is extensively used in the vibration analysis. Okay, that is the only sensors which is used for the vibration for crack detection, for thickness measurements, all those things you will find that it is used. For generating high voltage, because momentarily it will I make a very high voltage, even though I mean there is the current capability is very small, but I can generate a high voltage if I apply sudden high pressures okay, or impact on the piezoelectric crystals, obviously the high voltage will be generated and ultrasonics right. These are the different also we have not mentioned. So, it is also extensively used as I told you earlier at the beginning of the lesson for making the crystal oscillator. A piezoelectric phenomena let us look at historic background of these particular sensors. In 1880 Curie brothers discovered the direct piezoelectric effect in certain solid crystalline dielectric substances such as quartz. Quartz is a natural substance. We will see that quartz is not only the uh, uh, material which has a piezoelectric effect. There are many synthetic materials I mean which found later on I mean or the scientists have developed. We will see that in those piezoelectric materials, uh, those, in those materials um, uh, you have you can get the piezoelectric effect right. 
Now, under stress free condition, what will happen? What is under stress free? Let us look at the diagram under the stress free condition, what will happen to these piezoelectric sensors? You see, this is a total, uh, I mean, this is silicon dioxide uh, crystals. You see what will happen here. I have silicon, this is positive, and this x axis, and this, uh, I mean, this is a silicon ion, this is the oxygen ion. So, the under stress free condition it will look like this right. Now, what will happen now if a stress is applied on this particular crystals? Let us look at when the force along the x axis is applied. So, I will get a response like this one. If I take the, this is y x axis, this is as y axis you see that if I apply some force it will happen. Let me see yes you see I am applying a force here force here I can this. I am applying a force here, force here. Also, the obviously, if I put on a obviously, it will also make on the both sides. Actually, on the both sides, I am putting a pressure. So, what will happen? You see that uh, these positive and negative ions will be distributed like this, right? This is along that x-axis. If I apply the pressure, now what will happen if I apply the force in the y-axis? You see, this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. This is the two plates A and B. charge is developed on the two faces A and B right. You can see that charges have been developed, charges have been developed across the plates A and B right. Positive charge will be developed here, negative charge will be developed here right. Now, above is known as longitudinal effect. This is called the longitudinal effect. We have also transverse effect. Let us look at that. When the force along the y axis it now suppose you apply the force along the y axis then what will happen? If I apply the force along the y axis, let us look at. So, I am applying force in this direction, in this direction. So, this is my y axis and this is x axis, right. But my plates are, I mean, I am collecting the charge from the, the plates which is placed on the x axis, right. So, what will happen? You see the positive charge will move in these directions and a negative charge will move in this direction. So, this will be positive plates and this will be negative plate, right. So, the uh, the stress which I am applying this is sigma y because that is sigma x if you can look at this is sigma x because this is applied here right applied here applied in, in this x directions and since it is direct in y directions we are applying this stress is sigma y clear. Now, charges are developed on the two faces A and B same the charges in the previous case when you apply the x axis along the x axis or across the x axis the charge which will be developed is across A and B and if I apply the stress in the y axis the charges developed will be also be uh, on the across the plates A and B. The above is known as transverse effect. One is the longitudinal effect transverse effect. We are all familiar with this longitudinal and transverse because we have extensively dis they are these points uh, have been discussed while we are discussed we while in the we have, you know, we have we studied the lesson on the stress or on the strain gauges right. Now, materials, what are the different materials which is used I mean uh, for the piezoelectric crystals? Because you know that previously the I mean this only quartz people thought of that is the only has property a quartz is quite expensive also quartz has a piezoelectric I mean property. So, you, uh, but later on we found that there are some synthetic materials also which has a piezoelectric property. Let us look at that. The materials that exhibit or that show a significant and useful piezoelectric effect fall under the three main groups. Okay. There are three main groups we can categorize. One is the natural quartz and Rochelle salt are the two. Quartz is very commonly used and Rochelle salt is also used. Then you have synthetic lithium sulphate, ammonium dihydrogen phosphate. These are the two different uh, synthetic materials. It has also these, these um, two materials also have the property of the piezoelectric effect. That means, if you apply pressures, the voltage will be de developed. If you apply the voltage, the pressure will be developed or force will be developed across the plates. Also, we have polarized ferroelectric crystals. These are barium titanate and lead zirconate titanate. This also coming on the synthetic, but this is um, property is something different. That is, uh, we have uh, put on a different categories, right. Because of their natural asymmetric uh, structure, the crystal materials other than the ferroelectric crystals 
uh, ferroelectric crystals ex show the effect without further processing. We do not need any further processing. We will see that the, if I have a natural asymmetric structure, then the crystal emitter area other than the ferroelectric crystals show the effect without further processing. However, for ferroelectric crystals, they need to undergo certain processing. What are those? They must be artificially polarized by applying a strong electric field to the material while it is heated to the temperature above the Curie point of the material. They are then slowly cooled with the field still applied. When the external field is removed, they have a remained polarization which allows them to show the piezoelectric effect or to exhibit the piezoelectric effect. Okay? This is the thing uh, we will have. Now, as piezoelectric transducer, if I look at actually naturally available transducer, you see that what how the it is, what are the different axes? We are taking one, you see these are all, I mean in this direction three, I mean and this all this arrow is actually the shear stress which is developed across the different axis of the piezoelectric crystals. Okay? These are the force typical, tensile or compressive, these are the shear. So, direction 1, 2, 3 are the compressions or tension, either compressive force can be tension, tensile force, both cases you will get a piezoelectric effect and 4, 5, 6 are the shear stress on the piezoelectric crystals. Right? Now, you see this is the typical piezoelectric, I mean I should, I should say the schematic of this piezoelectric crystals as it looks like, I can uh, take the axis like this is x axis, this is y axis, this is z axis or this is 1. 2 as it happened here, let us see. So, 1, 2, 3 in this case also I can show that this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3, right? Like this one. So, this is 1, this is 2 and this is 3. So, we have a shear also, right? So, the dimensions you see the width of the crystals is W, its thickness is T and its length is L. right? So, we have two electrodes, we have seen the two electrodes one in this and another one this one. So, we are taking out this voltage U. Right? So, we applied force F i across these plates. Right? Now, there are two families of constants, G constants and D constants which are used to describe the piezoelectric effect. Right? So, we will discuss two constants, if these are necessary or as I should say the parameters of the piezoelectric crystals by which we can define the piezoelectric crystals. So, that is the reason I am telling there are two families of constants, G constants and D constants which are used to describe the piezoelectric effect. So, G i j and D i j, what are these? Where i is the direction of the electric effect and j is the direction of the mechanical effect. So, G constant it is, is defined as G 3 3 field produced in direction 3 divided by stress produced stress applied for direction 3. Right? So, field produced that means I mean voltage E naught divided by T thickness and stress means force applied P i across that divided by area is not it. You see the force applied is P i and what is the width W into L that is the area of cross section. So, if I divide F i by, so I will get a stress F i divided by W into L, I will get stress and if I E naught divided by T, so I will get the field, is not it. So, E naught by T upon F i by W L. Now, D constant is defined as D 3 3 charge generated in direction 3 divided by force applied in direction 3, which can be written as Q divided by F i. Right? That means, the charge developed divided by the force applied. Moreover, P is equal to D multiplied by sigma, right? where P is the polarization and sigma is the stress and D is we call the sensitivity matrix of the piezoelectric crystals. Right? Equivalent circuits of the piezoelectric, I mean for this one you see like this one. So, we have a crystals, okay. then we have a, uh, you see that these are crystals, this is a charge, this, I mean equivalent circuit in not that sense, I mean if I replace this, I mean piezoelectric crystals by a signal generator, that it, the circuit will look like this one. So, I have a signal generator, voltage source, 
of Q, I mean, I mean uh, charge source. Then we have the resistance R crystals in parallel with the capacitance that means C crystals or CIs. So, crystals we are taking the first I mean three letters crystal. So, I am taking first three letters C R Y clear. Now, C R Y is the leakage resistance which is an extremely high this is 10 to the power 12 ohm or uh, is it 1000 gig ohm I should say and C crystals is equal to epsilon into W L by T typically I mean dimensions of a, of a expression for a of a capacitance so, right. W L is the area of cross sections of the capacitance if I consider it as a parallel plate capacitors T is the thickness and epsilon is the permittivity of the medium right or dielectric constant of the medium. And Q is the charge generated right. So, the Q charge generated R crystals leakage resistance which is around 1000 gig ohm and C crystals equivalent I mean capacitance of the crystals multi equal to epsilon W L divided by T and Q is the charge generated. Measuring circuit you look we have like this one. So, we have a crystals, we have a cable but there must be some cable some wire is to be connected and it is connected to the amplifier so that I will get the output E naught. Now, this is the complete circuit of an uh, piezoelectric crystals along with the uh, if we use you think of as a charge generator along with an amplifier. So, all the Im impedance of the amplifier also should come in the picture of the equivalent circuit right. So, here you will see we have Q R crystals that means leakage resistance of the crystals C C R Y capacitance C is the cable capacitance which is coming across R is the, is the amplifier impedance and is the input impedance input capacitance of the because as you know in any amplifier has capacitive range at which actually you will get the that particular input impedance. So, that impedance with the capacitance must be mentioned also in the equivalent circuit. Now, you see we have uh, we have simplified the circuits what we have you see here we have two capacit three capacitances and two uh, resistances this we have combined to an equivalent capacitances we are writing C and R and what is C and R let us look at. So, this is C all the capacitors are combined here and all the resistance are combined here we are getting the output voltage here and the charge generated Q right let us look at. So, charge generated with Q. So, C equal to C crystals plus C cable capacitance plus C amplifiers all will come in parallel. Then uh, since it is in parallel all will be added all the capacitance value will be added and R is the R crystals um, resistance in parallel with the amplifier resistance. So, E naught I can obviously write small i into R equal to d q by d t minus c to d E naught by d t whole multiplied into R or R c equal to R c multiplied by d E naught by d t plus E naught equal to R d q by d t. So, E naught by q because q is the input I mean we assume that the q is generated and what is the output so let us look at. So, the sensitivity will be E naught by q s in s domain R into s divided by R c s plus 1 right. This where q equal to d into f where E naught by f s that is E naught because as you know q is equal to d into multiplied by f where E naught is equal to E naught divided by F that is actually this uh, sense that should be the sensitivity because actually the, the we are applying the force, force is generating the charge right. So, but so actual sensitivity if you want to y we have to find not the E naught by uh, E naught by Q we have to find the E naught by F actually the output voltage divided by the force which you have applied equal to D into R into S equal to by R C S plus 1 this we can write D by C into tau S into 1 plus tau into s right where tau equal to r into c clear. The above represents a high pass uh, transfer functions uh, of this. So, it looks like 
it is not possible to measure any static force with these circuits. Please note the static is not possible, so only in the dynamic whenever there is a change in the uh, force or uh, then only I can measure I will get the output otherwise we will not get any output. Static sensitivity d by c will change with the change in any of the values of c cable capacitance I mean cable capacitance and c amplifier. Okay. So, it is sensitive to this, so this must be constant. For the reason we use a charge amplifier, so you see, so it is not possible to keep all these things constant, so it is better if we use a charge amplifier. Measurement using the charge amplifier, the charge amplifier looks like this, we have a Q and we have a R and C at the input sides, on the feedback side we have feedback resistance RF and the feedback capacitance CF and we are using operation amplifier, right. So, this is the basic charge amplifier. Now, from circuit analysis we can say that the dq by dt equal to minus e naught by rf minus cf into d e naught by dt. So, this will give you rf into cf into d e naught by dt plus e naught minus rf into dq by dt just algebraic manipulations we are doing or we can write e q by e naught by q in s domain plus e naught equal to minus rf s upon 1 plus R f C f into S and E naught by f S equal to minus D by C f tau f S 1 plus tau f S where tau f equal to R f into C f. The above circuit also cannot measure static force, but it removes the dependencies on the cable capacitance and the resistance. right? So, what is the cable capacitance all this thing will come in the picture. Now, piezoelectric accelerometer if you look at, so the basic block diagrams of the piezoelectric, so be, because piezoelectric I mean crystals are used as an accelerometer, so we can make a integration of that, we will get velocity, if you make a, another integration, so I get a displacement, right. You can vibration analysis as you know, it is extensively used as a piezoelectric sensor to pick up the vibration. So, the basic block diagram, so I have a seismic transducers, okay. k steepness of the crystals. Okay, piezoelectric transducers, this is a, and the output voltage we are getting E naught. Now, for a seismic transducers, we know that, that x naught by A i s equal to 1 upon s square plus 2 xi omega n s plus omega n square, right. For piezoelectric transducers, we have E naught upon f i s into d by c tau s 1 plus tau s, where tau equal to r c and d is the sensitivity. Now, I can write, I just make the little manipulations, e naught by a i s, s domain, e naught by f i into f i by x naught into x naught by a i. So, ultimately I am interested e naught by, this will all cancel out, e naught this will cancel out, this and this will cancel out. So, only e naught by a i will remain. So, this is if I substitute separately e naught by f i, f i by x naught and x naught by a i, I will get these whole expressions you see, I will get these whole expressions clear d by c tau s 1 plus tau s into k into 1 plus s square plus 2 xi omega n s plus omega n square. Now, E naught by f input s equal to 1 by m E naught by a i into s, this I can write d by c into tau s 1 plus tau s multiplied by k by m into 1 upon s square plus 2 xi omega n s plus omega n square equal to d by c tau s 1 plus tau s omega n square s square plus 2 xi omega n s plus omega n square, right. The response curve will look like, like this one, that means that the output voltage divided by f input, that means force, it will look like this, this is the highest point d by c, we are plotting omega here, okay. So, it is almost as a band pass characteristics, you can see with, with a certain hump. So, after that natural frequency, because at the natural frequency there will be some hump at resonance. So, after that it is falling down, right. 
at 1 by tau. So, I am getting the outputs the mod of E naught output voltage divided by the force in G omega domains will be d by c right. So, this is the response of the piezoelectric crystals. Now, uh, as I told you that oscillators are different types and you now piezoelectric crystals also has a tremendous applications in making oscillators. We are not discussing about the piezoelectric crystals as it is used as a uh, generation of the ultrasonic waves. When we have discussed the ultrasonics, we have seen that what are the different, how can you generate all these things, ultrasonic waves. And uh, but crystal oscillator is a very one of the common. Almost all of you are using some uh, quartz watch. What is the quartz? It is written. You see, it is written quartz. It's not that just to attract the I mean customers and and increase the price of the uh, watch. Actually, this is used for watch or wall clock. Everywhere you will find it is written quartz. The means that it they are using some oscillators because ultimately in all electronics I mean uh, watch or clock we need some uh, a basic oscillators. Right, so that will drive some stable motor, so that will be incremented. Uh, and it will st step change by for each signals it will change like this one, so that the seconds arm will move. Subsequently, it will move the minutes arm and uh, and further the hour arm, right? With the gear arrangement. Now, but basically, we see uh, I need an oscillator. Now, if I use what is the problem? If I use suppose a, uh, if you use an oscillator. Uh, based on five 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 or any others, you can use two transistors also to make an arm. Astable oscillators, or you can make an op amp to use make a stable oscillators. Not necessarily, I need sinus audio oscillation there, right? But the thing is there, you know, that if you make that type of oscillators, it heavily depends on the not only depends on the uh, on the type of the resistance capacitance, it depends on the uh, on the absolute value of the resistance and capacitance. And as you know, that as the time goes by, so this may change, right? This value of R and C may change, so that will change the ultimate the clock and the period of the clock. So, uh, if it changes obviously, your watch or clock will not no more remain uh, accurate. So, for that reason people use a crystal because as you know crystal is a property if you draw the equivalent circuits of crystals you will find there is a very high value of inductance we know. As you know the inductance if you have a, any coil has a large inductance obviously, its q will be uh, I mean quotient point will be very very high. right? So, if the, the Q is high obviously, if I use some oscillator circuit, some oscillator circuit based on this particular crystals, obviously, what will that time you should not see as a crystal. So, you will say you should you should look at at a, I mean a passive circuits which has a high value of inductance. If the inductance is very high obviously, what will happen you know that I will get the large value of the Q. So, this large value of the Q means I will get a tremendous amount of frequency stability of the circuit right. So, let us look at that. You see two piezoelectric uh, crystals with the electrodes plated on the opposite faces, a potential applied between the electrodes you know. Forces are exerted on the bound charges within the crystal. An electromechanical system is thus formed which will vibrate when properly excited right. A electromechanical system is thus formed which will vibrate when properly excited. The equivalent circuit is like this one you see, so, I have a inductance, let us look at, I have an inductance L, then I have a, I have an inductance L, I have a resistance R C and also a parallel capacitance C dash. This value of L is very, very high in the case of piezoelectric crystals. That makes the frequency stability excellent otherwise we nobody should care for these quartz crystals right. Now, neglecting R if I neglect R the impedance of the crystal is a reactance which can be given as J by omega C into omega square minus omega S square upon omega square minus omega P square, where omega S and omega P are the series and the parallel resonance of the circuit where omega s 1 by L c and omega p equal to 1 by L c plus 1 by L c dash right. Omega s as I just right now told the series resonant frequency and omega p is a parallel resonant frequency ok. These are the one is the series resonance and one is the parallel resonance 
frequency. So, what will happen actually? Since the C dash is much much greater than C, omega p is almost equal to omega s, right. So, if it is omega p omega s, reactants as a function of frequency, you see if I plot this one, it will look like this one. This is inductive here and here you see it is capacitive. Omega is series resonance, omega p is a parallel resonance, ok. So, this is the if I plot the reactants of the piezoelectric crystals versus frequency, I will get a response like this one, right. Now, the crystal reactants as well as that of the LC network must be inductive, quite obviously. Basically, crystal, I mean this, I mean your piezoelectric crystals you can see if you look at uh, from the basic point of view, it is nothing but an LC oscillators. We have studied the LC oscillators in our analog electronics. You see, it is simply the LC oscillators, only thing that L is replaced by the piezoelectric crystals. For the loop gain to be greater than unity, the oscillation frequency must lie between omega s and omega p, but closer to omega p. So, the loop gain we have seen, you see, that means it should lie between omega s and omega p, but closer to omega p. If it is there, so no problem, I can purposefully can uh, choose that thing. Since omega p is almost equal to omega s, the oscillator frequency is fully dependent on the crystals and not on the rest of the circuit. This is the most important point of the piezoelectric crystals. You see here, since omega p is equal to omega s, the oscillator frequency is fully dependent on the crystals and not on the rest of the circuit, because you need a rest of the circuits. We will find that we have other elements in the circuit, but the frequency will not depend, the frequency of the crystals or frequency of oscillation of the oscillator will not depend on the rest of the circuits, it will depend only on the crystal itself and it is highly stabilized, it hardly changes with time or anything. So, that is the reason I get a very stable frequency there. So, all these properties happens because, because of large inductance. Now, let us look at a FET uh, crystals oscillator shown in this next, I mean we see that there is a how using a FET, it is basically a culpit oscillator. So, we can see this is a typical culpit oscillators, you can see here. So, I have a crystals here, I have a 10 mega ohm resistance and I am using a transistors 2 and 2608 and these are tank circuits which value 61 to 122 microfarads with 300 picofarad capacitances emitter bypass capacitor 0 0.02 microfarads and the resistance emitter resistance of 2.2 mag mega ohm. So, this, but uh, please note that the piezoelectric crystal does not necessarily mean that it will have totally independent of temperatures, ok. It has temperature dependency, but you see the advantage of this one, this 10 mega ohm, 2 mega, 2.2 mega ohm capacitance value all these things, whatever the things and you see the inductance here is very small, one or two turns of coil can generate this type of. Uh, this type of inductance. So, what will happen you know that in these cases in this entire things what will happen this uh, oscillation frequency does not depend on this resistance capacitance and all these things. It will depend totally on the crystals and crystals that parameters does not change right. So, obviously by this I can get a very very stable signals from the circuit. We know as you know there are many other oscillators. So, we have a sinusoidal, we have a uh, we have a wind bridge oscillators because basic uh, in all oscillators as you know the basic mother of the all the uh, function generation is the sine wave because once you get the sine wave I can pass through a Schmitt trigger. So, I can I can make a square wave if you uh, differentiate a square wave I will get a pulse if you integrate a square wave I will get a uh, I mean it looks like this you see that if I have a sinusoidal wave I should take some other color. So, I get a square wave like this uh, sinusoidal wave ok. There are various type of oscillators we know wind bridge oscillators ok, then uh, phase shift oscillators, culpits oscillators. So, these are the different types of oscillators available. Now, these signals sinusoidal signals ok, if I pass through uh, a Schmitt trigger I will get a signal like this one right. If I chop the other parts I will get a signal like this one lower part. 
right if you do not have a dual supply so I will get if it is 0 so it will not. Now, if I integrate this signal so how will I get the signal I will get the signal like this is not it. So, I get a triangular wave now if I differentiate this signal omega what I will get I will get a pulse like this one is not it. So, this will I mean uh, this is the base. So, the basic of the all the signal generator is basically sinusoidal wave that we have seen right. But uh, as you know that in the crystal oscillators also we are basically generating sinusoidal wave. Then we are passing through a meter we are making a square wave. So, there are many I mean uh, wind which oscillators why you should ask why should you go for crystal oscillators as a piezoelectric base sensors piezoelectric base uh, oscillator because of the frequency stability. In wind mirror oscillators or a phase shift oscillator you will not get that type of good stability right. So, as you can see in this particular lessons we have discussed the, uh, the basic piezoelectric sensors its structure crystal structures how we can apply the force how we will get the signals what is the charge amplifiers that we have discussed and, and what is the problem with the uh, simple amplifiers that is heavily dependence on the cable capacitance cable resistance that can be avoided if I use a charge amplifier. So, those type of things we have discussed in this particular lesson also we have discussed that a piezoelectric sense I am not going to the vibration analysis all those things, but piezoelectric crystals are also used for vibration analysis crack detections and all these things.